Let's make a festive Whoville house. Keep watching. We are going to start out with the second of these little Halloween signs. I'll link the video for the other sign we made a gingerbread house with. We're going to start by taking off anything that would make the surface bumpy or rough. You're just going to sand that off. And then I'm going to put chalk paint on here. I'm going to chalk paint the whole thing. It's going to take two coats. And be sure that when painting that you get all the sides and as much of the surface area covered as possible. If you paint the entire sign, then you have the option of doing something on the back side of it so you have a reversible sign. But today we're just going to work on one sign. Once you have full coverage and it has dried, we're going to start with the roof line. And I'm just going to take this, I don't know exactly what you would call this, pom-pom ribbon maybe. Measure off what you want and enough to cover from the bottom to the top of the roof line. Going to use hot glue to start applying this down. Careful with your fingers here, either use your protectors or use a spatula, something like that to protect yourself. We're just going to overlap. You can see I'm attempting to make sure that those little puff balls line up in the gap so that they're not stacked on one another but they have room to just fall, fall there. Don't worry about the messiness on the sides, that's going to be fixed shortly. These things pick up a lot of lint, so be sure you clean them up. You don't want dirty snow on your roof line. Now you can just trim this up. I suppose if you had a rotary cutter, you could use that here also. I don't have one of those yet. Thinking about getting one, if you have one, what brand do you have and do you recommend it? Now we're going to work on the door. So I'm just using a scrap of paper to trace out my door. These are acrylic paint markers that I got from Amazon. Uh, they came with fine tip and with uh, like a bullet tip. I'll try to put that link for you in the description box. The house is going to need some decoration and a lot of color. So I'm going to freehand a lot of stuff. You're going to see me make mistakes. You're going to see me have like on this wreath that was kind of like a smushed donut. Like you can fix all that. Once you start putting down your layers, you can fix that. So don't worry if you mess up. Don't just scrap the entire project. Just start over. Go back around your edging and fix it. And if all else fails and you mess it up, let all of your layers dry and then just go and put another coat or two of chalk paint on top. Not a problem. And don't be hard on yourself. Use your imagination. That's certainly what I did here. I'm leaving in every mistake that I made. So see, I'm drawing out my peppermint candies. You'll see when I start coloring those, what I did wrong there. So Whoville is the little village in the Grinch who stole Christmas. So you can see craziness all over the place in their design and it's just joyful and happy. And that's kind of what I was aiming for in this. So I realized my error there with my peppermint stick um, candy, and I went back and, and fixed it. Just went right over it. Doesn't matter, there's pencil lines there. You can erase the pencil lines or just go over it. 
See there? Fixed. Not a problem. So when I started this project, I've already got the gingerbread house done, but when I started this one, I was thinking I would do another gingerbread house until I started realizing that the colors that I, were draw that I was drawn to for this project were looking a lot like a childhood book. So I thought, well, we're just going to run with that then. It was a creative spark and you got to run with it when you feel it. There's my little door mustache above the door mustache. So you can make swirlies, you can make crisscross, hashtags, polka dots, stripes, candy patterns, whatever you want to use. So these markers I am happy with. There are a couple little things that are probably uh, user error that I'm going to be working with. Um, for instance, when you color with these markers, these fine tips, if you use the tip straight down instead of at an angle, it tends to splatter the paint just a little bit. And I noticed that when I did the wreath, but it's it's very small. It's not it's not too bad, but you know, I'm learning from that and I just know that I need to hold the pen at a different angle. And that's okay. When I did that, no problem. So I'm going to add some bows here and there. And pretty much what I'm doing is just doodling. I'll stop for a moment. You'll see me pause. I wanted to leave that in there so you could see that, you know, I didn't just sit down and just throw this all together at one time. No, I had to kind of look at it and see what I thought I needed here and there. That pen that I'm using now is silver. Because initially I didn't want to put any any heavy lines in it. I wanted my door to be paneled. Well, I thought I did at this point. But once I got it down there, I realized it's really too bold and not exactly what I was looking for in the design. But that's okay because I'm going to fix that later. I'm just going back in with a white pen to go over where my pencil marks were and clean up the edges of the red. It really makes the red pop when you do this. I imagine that would work with any of the darker colors. I'm just going to freehand some little arched windows here. And I'm going to put a little shadow there and color that in. It's kind of hard to see that. I'll tilt it in a moment and then you'll be able to see. There you go. Kind of hard to see that silver at that angle. So as long as you holding that pin to the side, it works great and has a good flow. So I colored these yellow to almost look like there was light inside of the house. Since there's no window on our door. And then here I am with the thicker tip white one, a white marker, and I'm just going back over that silver to kind of dull it down. So it will look more like, mm, more like just shading on the door instead of this big bold gray and silver I don't know it just looked like it didn't fit to me just adding some more little swirlies here on my little design and I'm gonna put some little patterns around the window this video is for inspiration for you do it however you want to. Make your house look any way you want. You want to cover it from head to toe with something that looks like icing or 
or with hearts from head to toe or candy from head to toe or top to bottom. Do it however you want to do it. So I felt like I needed a little bit more greenery here. I'm going to make almost like uh, pine swags to go under the windows and then on the door. And adding some more bows. You definitely have to be sure since this is paint that you give time for the layers to dry before you put anything on top because if if you don't I'm pretty sure that would smear and it would muddy up that color so where I did the red on the yellow would probably appear orange when I finished I decided to go back and outline everything in black now I don't know why I like the look of this so much but I do I can remember being a kid and when I would color a picture, I always traced everything in black. For as long as I can remember, that was my preferred look. It made everything stand out better. And so in doing this in my little house that I made, I really, I don't know, it really felt like I was getting, I was getting somewhere. It was starting to be really the complete look that I was look, hoping for and the feel that I was hoping for. And so I didn't use exact straight lines. I used some little squiggles, some little dashes, some little dots. Um, you'll notice that around the wreath on the, on the door. If you don't have this form that I used, mine came from Dirt Cheap and it was originally from Target in the Halloween section last year. You can always use one of those little house forms that you get from the Dollar Tree. And there's a variety of them. They have some gingerbread houses. Then over in the craft section, they have some that look um, like arrows maybe. And maybe you could even use an arrow for that. Use whatever form you want to. And you could really do this on construction paper or you could do this on foam board if you wanted to. And then you could just make a village. You can make a bunch of them. Trace them out and fix them up. Maybe make them look exactly like you have in your imagination. Sometimes that's easier said than done though. I think you get it in your head but then you can't, it won't come out in your hands like you want it to. I'm adding some little red berries, little red dots onto the greenery there. And I'm going to add two tiny wreaths underneath here. And all the little dots that I put around that blue swirly line under the large heart, those are like Christmas lights, I guess. The little dots. I could have connected them, but I didn't. They look whimsical and I'm okay with that. At this point, take a look around. Look at your design. See if there's anything else that you want to add to it. Go to Pinterest. Maybe get some inspiration from there. What do you think would look good with your house, the shape of your house, the colors that you're using? You can even add some stickers if you wanted to on here. I'm adding in some little lights or decoration onto my little wreath on the door. You can see the lines now. You get a better look at the squiggles and the dashes. And then I'm going back over with my thicker tip white acrylic marker. And that looks more like a shadow. That's more of the look that I wanted it to have in the first place. Okay, so I'm happy with my drawing and I'm going to add some trees on the side. And luckily with this form, there's some little spaces in the stand where I can add some glue. And I'm just gonna take one of my clamps from the Dollar Tree laundry section to hold that tree in place until the glue sets up. And I think this is perfect. This definitely looks like it would have come from the Grinch movie. What do you think? Do you like this? Are you gonna try it? You definitely should. 
big welcome to all of my new subscribers. I'm so glad to have you. And for those of you who've been around, thank you so much. I love it. I'll see you again soon. Bye.